well, as you say, if there's more clubs coming in for him, he needs to be sensible. And I think with Man United, look, I, I think the terms will probably be agreeable. I think sometimes, again, it's interpretation. When I think of terms, I sort of think, would 150 grand a week, you know, this squad number, this status in the team, these bonuses, would that be acceptable? Yes. That doesn't necessarily mean you've agreed to join, if you get where I'm coming from. So I, I, th I think Man United's terms are going to be fine. I still think he's, he wants to make that decision based on family. Where does he want to stay? They've obviously had a very big upheaval. There, there is the, the Brentford element because they gave him that chance and that opportunity. I think from a Man United point of view, though, to lose, and I mean this with all due respect to the other clubs linked to him, to lose out a free transfer of Ericsson's one of those clubs, it will be a damning statement which fans just don't want to go through. And I think they just want to feel that, you know what, we can't sign a player over Brentford, you know, especially, you know, Newcastle, yes, they're on the way up. But Ericsson's probably not going to see the upside of, of Newcastle's investment, if that makes sense. So it, it would be a bitter one and a painful one uh, for United fans to take. Yeah. Harry, the thing is with Manchester United that fans are still looking at every target based upon the club's history, based upon the potential under Ten Hag. There's nothing wrong with that. You'd expect that from a football fan. But Manchester United, in a foundational sense, in a strategic sense, in a financial sense, in a dressing room sense, are at rock bottom. They've got no Champions League. They've got no unity. They've got a brand new manager, which is hugely exciting, but we don't know what he's going to do. And the whole point was that Ralph Ranić was supposed to come in and build stepping stones for whoever came in, whether at the time it was a Pochettino or a Ten Hag or a Zinedine Zidane. Ten Hag is now in, and it turns out that Ralph Rangnick's gone. Manchester United don't have the same budget as their rivals. And then a player like Ericsson's coming in and you have to sell his position in the team, especially at his age when he's relocating with his family from a place like London, having really enjoyed being so focal and in red hot form at Brentford. And then he walks into a team and he needs to understand what formation is Eric Ten Hag going to play? What's the relationship going to be like with CR7? Who else are Manchester United going to bring in? What role does Anthony Martial have at the club? And I don't mean to sound like I'm getting on my high horse and slagging off Manchester United. I grew up watching Manchester United under Sir Alex Ferguson. Brilliant club, wonderful history. But take that history and rip it up and throw it out of the window. Because if you're... <laughs> Sorry. You give a damn about a treble in 1999. What you care about is at this football club, am I going to enjoy coming in day on day? Am I going to have a direct relationship with the manager? What's it going to be like being in a dressing room with Cristiano Ronaldo? Where do I fit in the team? How often am I going to play? And yet, of course, what am I going to get paid? And in considering that, he may decide that Manchester United is the wrong club for him. And this is the problem, that the reputation of Manchester United historically doesn't get you a footballer when the other rivals in this day and age in the Premier League have all got good training centres. Most of them are in really decent cities to live in and can still pay you that 100 to 150,000 a week. So Manchester United need to pitch to players now. And perhaps they didn't under Sir Alex Ferguson. And I think the fan base needs to just accept the cold, hard reality, which is Christian Eriksen is not going to relocate from London to Manchester United with no Champions League football solely for the money or the history. He's going to relocate to Manchester United because Ten Hag sells him his role in the team and the dressing room and the fact that it's still a great club with a great fan base and a great stadium. But if United continue just to cling to the history of what they used to be in trying to get players, they'll keep losing out to a Brentford. But but I, I feel like, I, I listen, I, I get a lot of what you're saying there. And I think history is important, but no one signs for Man United because what they used to do, is, it's got to be about the future. And again, a lot of the reports have suggested and, and stated that how De Jong's been convinced, and I know that, as you've already alluded to, you know, you've been told different things, but a lot of it's been around how they're going to build, how they're going to play, what they need these individuals for, what Ted Hall's going to try and achieve. And I think that's all well and good. The one that there's still the one issue I have is every manager has been promised, every manager that's joined since Fergie has been promised the opportunity to build something, and none of them have been allowed to get to the end, end of that process for one reason or another, whether they've not been good enough, whether there's been player issues and vice versa. So I, I totally get the, the, the scepticism 
But equally for United fans, sometimes it's that saying that out loud that can be an issue for them, as it were. I'm pretty confident on on, on both De Jong and Ericsson, if I'm being honest. I think United will be able to pull them off. But then it's about delivering. That's just my personal feeling. I, I think we will, but um, we'll see. If we don't, I'm absolutely in the mud and we'll see.